the entire life of the teacher that is ineffective for the teacher. Turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 19, verse 14. It says, And Lot went out, spake unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that Lot and his sons in law. May the Lord be to us today. Pray that uh, everything that the Lord will help me to say what you want me to say. And uh, that you will use this message, Lord, to go well. One of the greatest aspects of life and about salvation is that you can never lose it. Once getting saved, you can you are eternally secure with God. You can never lose it. But I'm going to talk about one particular aspect about Christianity that many Christians out there have lost, or rather have ruined. Going back into verse 14, we see that Lot is warning his relatives, warning his sons-in-law about the impending doom upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And he says, Up! Oh, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. Hey! The city will be destroyed, and if you don't heed my warning, you'll be destroyed along with it. And just like Lot, in this passage, in this verse, Lot has lost his testimony. Just like Lot, many Christians have lost and ruined their testimony to the world. They say, repent, repent, repent. But no one listens. No one believes them. Though they profess that this be worship and serve this amazing God through their actions and their daily routine, the things they indulge in, speaks otherwise. And I'd like to call on these people who have lost their testimony ineffective Christians. Have you become an ineffective Christian? Have you lost your testimony? Today we'll be looking at three aspects of the ineffective Christian. Number one, decisions based without God's guidance. Here, looking all the way back to around where Lot was introduced in chapter 13, verse 10, we see Lot faced with this decision. We see that Abraham and Lot's men were fighting over each other, so they decided to split ways, and they have decided to choose where to dwell. And just here, it says in 10, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that is well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to the sword. And Lot told them all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves and went that one from the other. Going down to verse 14, it says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that law was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. Just like Lot here, in comparison with Abraham, who waited for God to tell him to open his eyes, instead of waiting for God's answer, Lot chose what looked good for him. Lot went ahead of himself and chose what was pleasurable to his eyes. And here we see in verse 10 that he chose all the plain of Jordan. And just like many Christians, many Christians have disregarded God's plan for their life, disregarding the fact that God's plan is the best for them. And here... In verse 12, it says, Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the city of the plain, and pitched his tents towards Sodom. The main problem with disregarding God's guidance in your decisions is whether or not you're a Christian, you're going to fall into sin. You're going to go into temptation, and you're going to give in. Which then leads to our second point. Sin. Continuing in sin, despite knowing the consequences. Here in chapter 14, we see Lot being captured by Sodom and Gomorrah due to the conflicts that have with his neighboring cities. And Lot gets messed up. He gets, he gets into this mess with Sodom and Gomorrah due to just him just pitching his tent towards Sodom. And thankfully, though, Abraham was able to help and save Lot from his captors. And we never really see him anymore in chapter, until chapter 19, verse 1. And it was amazing. After I saw verse 1, where the angels went to meet Lot, instead of Lot learning his lesson, instead of Lot learning to not mess with Sodom and Gomorrah, not to pitch his tent towards Sodom and Gomorrah, he's back in it. 
And just like Lot, many Christians, though going through these consequences, though being reprimanded for going through these sin, they go back to it in the end. They go back into the very sin that made them go through those consequences. Which then leads us to my last and final point. Association, or rather, the involvement in the world. Here in verse 1, when the two angels meet, Saw, meet Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, it said, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Now, here, you can basically see that Lot was a gatekeeper. He wasn't just this random citizen that just lived in the houses of Sodom and Gomorrah. They didn't just meet him in his house. They met him in the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah. Basically stated, he was a gatekeeper, a person who was trusted among this sinful city, a person who was in high ranking among the city. And just like Lot, many Christians have completely associated themselves with this world, have involved themselves with this world so much, to the point you can't even find a difference between them and any other city. They become indistinguishable from this world. In my conclusion, we Christians, we serve an amazing God. We serve a God who's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, a God who has titles of counselor, peace, prince of peace, the Alpha and Omega, the God who created everything, the God, the loving God who sent his only begotten son to die for us. But does it show through our actions? Does it show through the type of people that we associate with? Does it show through the type of music that we listen to? The shows we watch? You know, there's so many people out there who worship all these false idols, these false gods, but I find it saddening that though they believe in all these false gods, they're more faithful to these false gods than sometimes we are to the one and true God. So let me challenge you today to not become the ineffective Christian, to not lose your testimony and to just profess to the world that you serve a God, but to show through your actions, to show through your lives that yes, we serve an amazing God. So I have a question at the end today. Will you become the ineffective Christian or will you keep your testimony? Keep your testimony and to your friends, and to your family, and most importantly,